Okay, so thank you guys for joining today. Oh, there's Courtney, perfect timing. We're just gonna get started here. So um, today we're gonna do how to create an email in the design center and then send that email out to either a certain group or your whole database that is in command. So anyone in your database that has an email. So first we're gonna start by checking out the email designs that we have. So with that said, as always, this red KW in the top left-hand corner opens up your menu. I still use it every single time I'm going to a different tab in here. It just makes it easier to go straight to where you wanna be. And we're gonna go into designs. So the, there's a, a slight difference when someone says, I'm gonna email my client. Um, typically you're just gonna go to your Gmail and type in their name and send them an email. This is gonna be more for groups or your whole database. This is, it, it could be a newsletter if you wanted to produce that newsletter yourself every month because you actually all have the ability to schedule these emails to go out. Um, so uh, unfortunately right now we have not, um, we don't have the you know, smart plan with the market leader for, per se looking um, newsletters. I'm hoping that's coming. I was on a tech call um, today and I had my hand up to ask a question and then I just, it didn't get answered. They didn't get to me in time. So I was kind of bummed about that, but um, I'll definitely keep everyone updated on if that's coming, especially with market leader going away. I know a lot of our agents um, are looking for that newsletter. So this is going to be more if you want to um, also maybe announce an event that you're having. Um, today we could do a happy holidays email if you'd like. I think that's a good idea. Um, thank you, Courtney. It looks like you agree. <laughs> um, we did the holiday postcards on Tuesday, so this email will be a good follow-up for that actually. So again, I'm in the design center right now. Yours is going to look a little different than mine. I've created quite a few designs. Um, you are going to see my design templates up here. So um, underneath is, is unfortunately in my eyes, all of the templates that you have created. Um, they do have folders up here. Personally, I have a very clean, uh, you know, I have a very clean um, desktop. Some people do, some people don't. I do. So when I see things like on my template, um, on my template homepage, it, for me, it's a little bit nutty, but you know, if you just kind of look past that, you can go straight to your separate folders if you're looking to come back to update something specific here. So I like to point that out. So we have um, different libraries. We're going to be working today in the email design library. So in order to access that particular library, we do have to click on this plus sign in the bottom right hand corner. So as soon as you click on that, you're going to see your different design libraries. And again, email is the first one. So we're going to go ahead and focus on that. And we're going to click this next button, which is going to take us to the library. So I actually just noticed something. I don't know what this import HTML is. Um, so I'm going to play with that later. And I actually am going to access this. I probably shouldn't have clicked on that since I didn't know what it would have done. Um, but let me click back on my plus sign, go into email, and I'm going to say next. So you can see here on this home page of the, the email templates, this is a newer release. Um, so this is going to continue to grow. They're going to continue to add um, more templates here. And hopefully they will add um, maybe newsletters and and, and such things like that. So we can put together some smart plans. Um, so right now uh, you have your Keller Williams um, international templates and then 
your my design. So anything that you create will be in here. For example, when we are getting ready to go um, email this out, we're gonna probably choose from my designs. So because these are new, unfortunately they don't have thumbnails. Um, and in order to view what the email actually looks like, it is going to take a little bit of exploring on the agent's part. So I've had to come in and kind of look at all of these different ones just to get myself familiar with what they look like. Um, we're going to concentrate on the happy holidays one here, but you could see at the bottom, there's a total of 41 templates. So you can load more. So when the class is over and you know we save this email as a draft or you send it out today, um, I would definitely come back and explore some of these other um, templates that they have in there. Now I've scrolled all the way to the bottom and you can see that they do have some in here that actually have fun, nice thumbnails. So a thumbnail is basically a picture um, versus just this little like email thing right here. Um, so with that said, because this is a class on all of the email or on email designs, um, what we're going to work on is the holiday but one, but I want to go ahead and just click on this first one so you guys can see um, it's actually a lot more than it looks like. So I'm going to click on this buy versus rent. We're not going to work on this. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So for example, here's a buy versus rent that they created for all of the agents. Now this is a template. So you're going to see there's no, um, there's no logo here. If I scroll down, it just says there's no picture, but this is the cool part right here. If I go to options, and preview, this is actually what it's going to look like when you send it out. So if you like this template without having to change anything on it, you could actually go to step two of what we're gonna do today. And this stuff all ends up filtering through um, all of your Im information. So it's kind of a weird roundabout way of how they've done these, um, but that was a buy versus rent. Um, I'm gonna just go out um, and back in and show you guys another one. Um, so let's see, how to know when you're ready to buy. So these could compose a monthly newsletter if you, unfortunately had to take the time to come in here, choose which ones you wanted to add to your smart plan. Um, but- hey, me, hey, Rachel, can, can we look at the one that's called request for a referral? Sure. The reason is I saw that and, and a light bulb went off in me because uh, that's the hardest thing for me to do is call up old clients and say, could you put a referral out there for me? Or if I gave someone your name and number, it's awkward, but if you send it in this way, maybe it would, I don't know, yeah. be a little bit easier, yeah, less confrontational, absolutely. you know. And you can absolutely come in and I, I, I encourage you to come in and explore all of, all of the ones that they offer in here. Yeah. Um, but this again, I always look at it as how um, the client's going to see it because this is the template view here. So the options and preview okay. is where you're going to see what it actually looks like. It's going to populate your information here. Yeah. And that's pulling from your marketing profile. Um, it should pull your picture and all that good stuff. That's kind of cool. That's like when you go to make a copy on the computer, you can hit you can hit print, but then you can hit preview to see what it's really going to look like so that you don't print all the pages. That's what this reminds me of. Yeah. You can actually also from here, send yourself a, a test email. So this is also within the options too. So you can actually see what that's going to look like when it comes through. Okay. Hey, Rachel. Uh -huh. um, for, my, for mine, it just comes through 
it has webs it says website instead of having my website <laughs> like how do i um, are you talking about when you hit preview yeah um down here um yeah mine looks yeah mine looks a little bit different than oh, so we can look at that michelle it's probably gonna all of this information pulls from your market um from your marketing profile, which is under settings. Okay. So, yes. Okay. So let's go ahead. How about this? Let's get started. Um, again, we're going to choose one today that we don't really need to personalize. Um, and I can show you what it would look like if you didn't want to go with any of the pre-made templates you can actually create your own over here. Now this does get a little bit more difficult, if you will. So I would name it up here. Say I wanted to do, uh, announce an event, you know, spring's coming and I wanna do a community garage sale um, or, or a buyer seminar, I'm not sure. We'll just say, garage sale. So I'm going to name it up here. And then I have these, which we call widgets on the right hand side. So I have a text widget image, a button. Buttons like an action button. If they click on it, it's going to lead them somewhere. We have a legal header and a legal footer, a listing block. So if you wanted to email out, if you had, if you just happen to have um, investors, um, and you had a whole group of investors and you got this new listing coming out, um, you could do a listing block and, and email that particular listing just to a certain group, if you will. There's the event blocker, event block right here. You can actually insert a video. So this would be a video that you've created, um, probably would have had to save to YouTube or some sort of um, platform to be able to have a link that will like an embedded link. Um, and then there's a market snap. So these are our nine widgets that we have. Um, I typically, typically if I was going to use one, I would probably start with a legal header and these are like a drag and drop. So you just drag, you click on it and drag it over and it places it at the top. So then maybe I wanted to do like an event. So I would just drag and drop this event block over and it's gonna customize that for me just like this. So designing these, I know it just is gonna be, if it's very specific, hopefully you could just find a template you like within the Keller Williams templates. Um, but it does get a little bit um, more, like I said, involved. And there's a couple different quirky things if you are editing or creating your own. So for instance, this picture, I could choose, I wanna edit each box. So if there's a box that I wanna edit, there's the little pencil. So each one of these things has its own little edit, including this button right here. And there's a link. So the buttons where it says view details or download by mobile app, that is actually the button widget. So if they click on it, it's gonna lead them to a different website. So again, these are just the, the features. I'm not gonna really go through, but the edit the picture you can um, replace this picture. Now I've already added some, I've played around with this. So I actually have images in here. You probably will not if you've never done this, um, but you can add uh, images here from your computer and you would just say whatever image you wanted to use. And then you could open that. Oh, <laughs> I love him. Click on it. So this is one of those quirky things is you have to click on it to select it, right? So you think when you upload it, you're like, oh, okay, done. Well, you actually have to like click it so it highlights and then replace. Another little quirky thing is you think up here you want to save it, 
but we're in this edit image. So we don't want say up here is saving the whole entire thing oh. down here. You want to say, okay, I'm done editing that specific part. Okay. Aww. Okay. <laughs> Same with the text. So if I'm editing the text and I'm going to say, actually, I like that December. Well, let's add a 15 on there. And I'm going to say done. I'm done with that text box. Right, I'm not quite ready to save everything, but I'm done with that text box. And then here's my event title. And if we were able to have one, we could say, um, is here. Friends misses here. I know I spelled it. So I'm going to say done. The great thing is you could see on the left that you're creating it as you're creating it, as you say done. So then here is your, I'm going to edit this box. I will say with our emails, and this has been a frustrating thing that I have dealt with if I'm trying to edit something that they've already created, you can see for some reason these there's these funky spaces. I, I don't know why it does that, I'm not sure. Um, obviously this, I'm just gonna edit. I am so excited for your where your ugly Better. U G O I E S T I E S T sweater. And then I'm going to say done again, right? So you're building this. Here's the details. This could be, I don't know why I would have anything here besides, um, let's see, where's my link? Here's my link right here. So I can send it to a landing page, a merge, a web address. Um, and then here's where I would put that. Maybe I'd put it to like a Google, um, I would say instead of view details, um, click here for my address and then lead them to like a Google landing page. I don't know with my address on it or something. Um, so that's just like a random kind of, I don't know, threw that together on how you would do that for the friends miss. You know, you might want to just, um, if I say done here, maybe, I think because I have web address, um, it is having me want to do something. But again, my point is you can actually see what you're doing. If you wanted to add something in here, um, like another text box, you could just put that up or below. Um, and here's your text here. Maybe not a textbook, but maybe you want to put a legal footer. Um, and I'll show you that. So here's that legal footer. So again, this is just don't get too caught up on this. You always want to go to options preview. This is actually what it's going to look like. Okay. I would think it would be really important to remember to hit that preview because then yes. you can see if your legal footer and your legal headers are exactly what you want them to be. Because like if you scroll down, I noticed that your legal footer, well. So these are all merge fields. Right, and then these are just pulling from. So that's why I like to point out for sure, you wanna see that preview. Like I would be like, do I really wanna want, you know, poor Grinch's had to be cut off. And then I could come in here and edit this. And maybe I would change these to be a little small. I mean, his head might be cut off in the picture. <laughs> I might say 450 to 250. You are gonna... such a perfectionist when it comes to your own stuff. It is a hoot. I can't help it. <laughs> you are. You are so perfectionistic when it comes to like just your little sample here. You have to fix it. You have I to. I would. Well, like this is bothering the heck out of me. I I'm can gonna center that. 
right? I want all of this to be centered. I mean, you it's, want it to look like how you're going to do it. To yeah, me. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just funny. Thank you. <laughs> but, you know, I, these aren't centered, so I don't know. This would take me, I'd spend way too much time on this maybe. <laughs> so that's why I just like to show you though, how you can create your own, um, uh, by using these widgets and how to edit the individual, um, boxes and or pictures and all that good stuff. So let's get into an actual template. I mean, they're really a lot easier than you can imagine. Um, I think having this video and coming back and playing around with creating your own, if you have your own ideas, great. But the biggest thing um, I'm going to just, whenever I exit out, it brings me back to the designs, um, the homepage. So I'm going to go back into email and click next. And let's look at this happy holidays. The step two is, is a little bit more important than not really important, I should say. So here is the holiday one. So it will enter their name. So if you're sending it to your database, it will say, dear Courtney, dear Michelle, dear Olivia. Um, I mean, really, honestly, there's not much you have to change on these. So if I said option preview, this is perfect. I would leave it as is. Now, Courtney, I know you're a great writer and you love to write and you're really, really good at it. So if you wanted to change this, what I would recommend for you, honestly, because instead of editing, the formatting is so weird. Do you see how it looks right yeah. now? I don't know why it does that. I've played around with it. If you actually just liked this picture, I would maybe almost delete and just bring over a text box here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that I way, do. You could just edit your own type yeah. and then see here's dear and then check this out. Here's your merge fields right here. Dear, there's a lot of them. So contact first name, comma, right? So dear contact first name, and then you can write whatever, you can write your holiday greetings, you can write whatever you want. But you have to select the, the contact first name? So yes, and the reason why is, is because you're going to be sending this out to multiple people. Okay. So this is a merge field, basically. Okay. So this is just saying when I select my hundred people that I want it to send to, yeah. that's going to pull their first name into the email. So it's personalized. Got it. Yeah. And, and, and for the... <laughs> For the signature, you don't have to say agent first, agent last. I mean, you literally can just type in your signature if you will. Or, or you could just, the footer is the signature, right? Yep. I mean, you can even um, sincerely, however you want to end it. I can't spell today. E R Y. Um, you know, Rachel. That's still going to auto populate to everything. It's ironic that you said, I like to write and I'm a good writer because I was reading what it says in what they've put out there for people. It's really rather good. I wouldn't have changed it. I was sitting here okay. thinking, that's really nice. So I'm just going to click the back <laughs> button right here then and say, just kidding. No, I want to keep it. So here's yeah. the back, here's a forward, um, different things like that. But they, it is, it, it, they did a great job. So really, if you come in here and preview it and you're like, yep, this is it, great. <laughs> I could just save and exit. So when you save, or for so when you put in contact, first name, last name, does, it, does that mean that it will then auto-populate all of your contacts so that automatically so that everyone gets that? Correct. Okay. Well, um, no, that I'm sorry. That's in step two. What it does is where it's going to, it's going to, it's going to auto populate their name here. So you don't want to put second name in like a greeting. You, I wouldn't say dear Courtney Rusoff, unless you want to, you could. But I right. No, I get what you're saying. Contact first name, then it will just grab the first name of the contact. Correct. Okay. Yep. And all this other stuff will fit, will filter in there. 
So I um, already saved it. So you it literally, if you liked it the way it is, you just save and exit. And that shows up right on your design template. So we're gonna go into how do I send this or schedule this to be sent out to all the contacts in my database. So I always like to say, you're gonna create your design and designs and you're gonna send it out in campaigns. So once you know you're happy with the design created, you're going to go to campaigns and this is where we're going to create a new campaign. So in the top right hand corner, you can see the little plus and it says create a new campaign. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. Uh, wait, this is email. Hold on. Sorry, back up. Um, we have to configure our email list first, okay? So once you have an email list, you won't have to do it, but we're gonna click on email here. So you do create, create you do, you do um, push on create a new campaign, but then you have to click on emails? Um, no, I'm sorry. You would just come to campaigns. Yeah. And then go to emails. This is the email tab up here. Okay. And then, so these are going to be like all your emails that you've sent. So I've just done some test ones here. Um, we want to configure our contact list first. So who do we want to send this email to? Is it all of our contacts? Is it just a group of contacts? So we have to make sure we configure our lists first. So we're going to click on that. And now these are only pulling from who's in your command database, right? So I have in here just, I've done for test a California list. So I have 20 people, friends and family in California. I have 20 contacts an all contact list in here. So you can have an investor list. You can have a community list. You can have whatever kind of list you want. Um, but we're going to create, we can have an all contact list, right? So this is again, who do I want to, who are my email lists? Who are my email groups? So we're going to create a list. And for this, I might want to send it to all my contacts. I might just want to send it to my past client clients. Um, I want, might want to include my friends and family, but I'm just going to assume we want to send it to everyone in my database that has an email. So I'm just going to say all my contacts. So here's one of the tricky things with command. It's kind of annoying, but. Hey, Rachel. Yep. What, what if you don't have like the list name already set up, but how do you set that up with all your contacts? Yep. So that's what we're actually creating right now. Okay. So we get to, yep. That's okay. So we get to name whatever we want it. So again, we have, you can have, I have, if I got an email, here's, a, so we're going to create the initial one. So an all contact list. So if you get a new contact in your database, after you create this list, you're going to need to have a step on, on your list to add them to here. They won't automatically add to an all contact list that you've created. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what you're saying is you have to keep updating your whole database so that you are sure that the contacts are not only in there, but then added to whatever it is you want them to receive. Correct. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it would be nice to just have a little box that said all contacts, uh, you know, or different things like that. But as of right now, so we're going to name this our all contacts. Here's one of those finicky things. If you have a lot of them, you're going to have to scroll to the bottom and load more. Now, I don't have to, but if you have a lot of contacts, you might have, it's going to say load more. And then you'll scroll to the bottom and load more. So I'm not sure I don't remember the amount it loads at a time. I want to say a hundred at a time, uh, 50 to hundred at a time. So you would have to scroll all the way to the bottom 
load more, scroll, load more, and then come up to the top and say, select all. Oh my God. Okay. It sounds worse than it actually is. Honestly, um, it's just a little bit more time consuming. So I have 92 contacts in my email. So I might have like 500 contacts, but this is only going to pull the contacts that have an email address. Got it. Okay. So I'm just going to hit confirm. And now I must have added one contact since the last time I did this, but now I have an all contacts list. So had I, had I got a new lead, say I got a new contact or I just met someone and I want to add them to my mailing list, you do have to add them as a contact here. But then I want to remember come into my campaigns and my emails and my list and edit and add that person here. Oops, excuse me, add them here. And you could just search for them and select their name and add them. That's how you're just gonna continue to grow that. Make sense? So once you have your all contact list, you just have to add people to them as they come in. So if you're doing a mass all contact email, they're gonna be included. Okay, so now we have our list, right? Um, really quick, again, I, I forgot to skip over this, but how I did my, I have all my people tagged California. So if you have investors tagged, or if maybe you have realtors in your database that you have tagged as a realtor because you like to send them updated listings, I don't know. Um, you could actually search by tags and create your email lists that way. Great, so I just was able to find my California. It's gonna then bring up only the people in California. I could select all, and I only have 20 people that are tagged California, but all 20 of them happen to have an email address. So that's how you would do, um, create a list using tags. Okay. All right, so once we have our all contact list ready, now we're ready to send out or at least schedule our email to go out. So we're gonna come up to create a new campaign at this point. Now we're ready, we have our list configured. We're gonna create a new campaign and it's gonna be an email campaign. So we always have to name this email campaign. So this is going to be our holiday email. We all even put all contacts. What is your goal? That's pretty much just brand awareness here. I'm just trying to say, hey, everybody, don't forget about me. <laughs> I'm your realtor. And then we want to use command email. We get 5,000 free emails to send out through command a month. Um, so that's pretty cool. So I'm going to say set up campaign. So it's actually a pretty simple process at this point. Um, it's coming from you. So that should auto populate. Um, here's your recipients list. So I'm going to click here. Here are my three lists, right? From the last page, I have a California, I have an all contact. And then this is the one that I just created. So this is how you're going to be able to differentiate. Ooh, that was a weird one. Um, who you want to send it to. So I want all contacts. Um, if they reply, I want it to come to my KW. And then your subject line. What's the subject of your email? Happy. Yeah, we're going to be able to do this. This is too hard. I can tell right now. I am not going to be able to do this. <laughs> I promise you will. We could do your first one together. Happy, happy holidays from your trusted realtor. <laughs> okay. So then here, all I got to do, select a design. Mm. There's my design right there. Classic happy holidays. Is this the correct one? Yep. Save and exit. There it is. It's beautiful. Did you select a date that you know you want it to go out at or? Not yet. Okay. But you're, we're right there. Yep. So okay. I, I went to the left side first 
And then now up here on the right, I can either send it right now. Okay. Or I could schedule that to go out maybe on Christmas Eve if I wanted. <laughs> it didn't like that. If it sent it, then that's not cool. <laughs> Rachel, if you send it and then you realize half the people you did not want to receive it, is is it too late? Are you screwed? Yeah. Okay. You can't I'm not doing this. It. I, I just, it dawned on me, half my friends are Jewish and I'm going, okay. Oh, well, you, you know what, Courtney, you should have a, um, there is a happy Hanukkah one in there. I saw oh, it. Oh yeah. And but, tag, use your tags, just tag any yeah, of yeah, your yeah. friends. Yeah. You're right. But I, you know, I, I just thought to myself, well, what if I just want to say happy holidays to everybody? And I just being a ditz totally forget that half the people that are I'm friends with are Jewish and they're going to probably think that ah, she's such a ditz. She did that shit again, but it's not like I'm going to lose friends over this, but I would hate, I would hate to do that accidentally because inevitably someone's going to be like, I I'm Jewish. Don't you remember this about me or whatever? <laughs> there is happy Hanukkah and there is, there is, Hanukkah, I think but so, so once you send it though, you can, it's not like you can go back and like on Facebook, you can, you can actually take a post down or you can edit it and, do, you know, fix your spelling or take out your bad word. Once you've sent this, this is it, right? Yes. Okay. Um, did your screen just black out? Is that why you're having to do it again? Because it's just, mine just like went blank. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, not good. It's not good. But that <laughs> just means, that just means that we were all had the same glitch at the same time. Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah. So so I have to go back into create a new campaign. Yes. And I made sure on mine it didn't save. So if you click on email at the top here, you could see it didn't save. Here's the thing. And I always like to do, Courtney, I always say when I'm doing something new, what I would recommend is create a list, configure a list with like you and maybe one or two people you know and trust, right? You and your husband, you and your son, and just create that list. So I'm gonna say my test list. And so I wanna always send it to myself first or my test group first. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that like, if they get it and something's wrong, I'm gonna fix it before I send it out to someone else. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I would make, make sure definitely have like a test list. Okay. I wish my mom was still alive at this point. My sister would purposely screw with me. She'd go, yeah, that's fine. And then I would send it out. Oh, yeah. and be... <laughs> Thanks, sister. No, she. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So somehow I just created like four of these. Okay. Yeah. So you have a test. If you have a test group, then when you're creating that campaign, you could send it to yourself or your test group um, and make sure that it does look good. Everything worked. You're happy with it. And there's your test group right there. I need to work with you on doing one that attracts buyers because um, I, I, I inevitably end up with when I do any business, which isn't often, but I, when I do it, I, I end up with listings, which is great, but I need more experience working with buyers. And I'm trying to figure out a way to reassure buyers that, you know, yes, it's hard to get something now, but if you have an agent that is really, really willing to work and persistently look at what comes up on the market, we can find something. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And again, that might be one. Um, I mean, we could definitely, again, I would recommend coming into designs. Yeah. Going into the plus sign email design library. Right now you can't search, but like this is a buy versus rent. Um, if you hover over, it'll show you. I saw, I saw one. So if you scroll down, there's actually one that that has buyer lead con or something Look, and you can buyer load lead conversion touch two buyer version conversion touch five okay um yeah. buyer conversion touch one so maybe this is an eight by eight 
because there's a bunch in here. Here's approachable. Let's see what approachable looks like. Oh, it's a just listed. That doesn't really make sense, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's not pick that one. Let's go back. I wish it would just kick me back to the email okay. design library. Um, so let's look at that buyer conversion touch one. Hi there, I'm Rachel with Marcus. I believe you're interested in a property in my portfolio. If that's the case, you'll be happy to have started building custom buyers. So this would be for like a lead that came in. Maybe you did like a Facebook ad around yeah. the listing. This would be a good one for that. Not maybe yeah. necessarily what you're talking about. Yeah, but that's okay. I, I guess. But you can create one, Courtney. Um, you could just come in here to email. I mean, you just kind of have to have a picture in mind that you want to use. Bring over your legal header, right? You're yeah. Here's an throw in an image of maybe a for sale or, you know, and it could be just even a house actually. Um, <laughs> I would probably again, oh my God, here I go, make this smaller. So I'd maybe make this 600. That's better. Here we go again with you and your. I don't want it too aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> so here's your text. And then this is really where you are free to write what you want here. Okay. You can have a headline. Okay. You know, like why uh, use me? And we can bold, we can make this maybe 22. We can bold it. We can see what it looks like. Yeah. Um, you can add to this right underneath. You just have to go back down to whatever your 16 is and unbold. And then one, I'm the best. Uh, right. So you can create your own. Yes. Also. Okay. And then just throw in your legal footer. You can actually even throw this button in right here and just say like, download my mobile app. The cool thing about the buttons, um, and I'll edit this. I can change the color, can make it red if I wanted. Um, so let's go red. And then I can say, uh, download my mobile app and then I could say I want to send it to a landing page and I might open up my my own personal website and we all should have this home search app right here all right so I'm going to copy that URL you can watch this back so you can see it so I want a web address and I'm gonna paste that there and say done. Um, please, oh no, special characters, done. So then I can open this up. I can't believe how fast you do this. It makes me, oh. I know. <laughs> Take me two hours to do this much. I don't think so. Yeah, I do. But I, I need to just shut up and quit bitching and try it. That's what I need to do. Yeah. Look what that yeah. email is starting to look like. Yeah. That looks, that looks really nice. And you're just bringing over, like I said, your widgets and then. Now, when you brought over that picture of that house, you already had that house in your images. So, I did. So maybe this is a whole other class, but if you, if you want to find some images, for example, some houses that you've sold already or um, a stock picture of something funny. Like one time I was trying to design an email that would convince people not to go for the for sale by owner route because there's so, a lot of people just put a sign out and then they let it grow mold and vines grow all over it and it starts to tilt and rust and it looks like crap. And I actually had a picture of a sign that looked like that. Oh and, yeah. And, um, so if you want to use your own 
pictures do, or your own designs, do you have to download those someplace and then upload them into command so that then you can select them? Basically. So like okay. I just went to Google. What? And I said, don't be a for sale by owner. Oh, 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 I and see. And just went to images. Oh, wow. So these now, are things that have been approved already that you can use. Not necessarily. There well, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and do stuff and apologize later. I'm sick right. of trying to figure out. Yeah, like look at this one. I would totally use this one. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. So you just save it in your pictures or wherever you want it. And then I would go here and browse for them. Sorry, I went really fast. Okay, I do. I do go fast sometimes. So I already pulled over my image widget. Wow. Okay. So if I, I pull this image widget over and then I'm going to add from wherever I saved it on my computer. Uh -huh. I think I just saved it to my downloads. Why not? Pictures. Oh, great. What is, oh, there's a bunch of caution tape all over it. <laughs> I don't remember actually where I saved it. <laughs> That's, so remember where you save it when you save it. Um, let's hit Who won the door contest? I don't know. I don't know if we, let's just put this one in here because this is funny too. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> so let's see. Hmm. Why use me? I'm the best. Duh. <laughs> that looks like an 80s haircut thing going on. It is. Um, hair. I, I don't remember why I have a bunch of 80s pictures in my picture library, but I do. That's funny. Um, but yeah, so again, the more you do, the more you play around with it, and you could just do test emails, like I said, like come in here, create a design or choose one come into campaigns, create, go to emails. You want to configure your list, even if it's just you or one other person in the beginning. Um, so you can at least see, I've sent a test to two people here so you could see what it comes, what it looks like. And then you can go through the process a couple of times too of, of doing it. Okay. Hey, Rachel, this is kind of off topic, but um, okay. when you were the other day, you were helping me change the 